This is, this is Underground, underground Opera. Opera. Hey, everybody. We are back. It's Wednesday night or Wednesday morning, depending on where you are. I'm going to bring my guest right on because I'm really, we was talking before the show and all, and we was really <laughs> hitting it off with the conversation. And I was like, man, I should have been recording some of this stuff. But, of course, I'm going to bring up my, my good buddy, Buckshot George. He started that open mic at the Golden Nugget Tavern at 2922 Hikes Lane, Louisville, Kentucky. And it's it's been moved to Sunday nights now, which is better than Tuesday nights probably, man. It seems like uh, I went this past Sunday and had a blast. And there's still that big neon behind you. If you make a video there, it looks like you're playing in Vegas. You need, you know, well, you can just kind of fib. That it's, that it's not because people will probably think it is with the big with the, with the neons behind you, but it's a good place to make a video if you well if you want. And Buckshot George is a hell of a guy, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in his I, I played bass in his video <laughs> and played bass on both his on, on his first EP and his last last single "Burn Down the Trailer Park" with with the video. And Underground Opolis presents the local ruckus coming May 11th. This time I have Vail and Carson Black. Now, I don't know much about Vail yet because I, I, I'm i looking. I, I'm watching their Instagram. But I, I just This just happened like yesterday. They, they got on the bill. So in the coming weeks, I will be telling you more about Vail. And Carson, Carson's a good young kid, man. He, he plays guitar and plays the cajon at the same time, and he's got a really great voice. He's been at a few of my, few of my open mics and a few of the shows I've put on already. And... He's he's a hell of a songwriter too, man. Plus, he does all that stuff himself. It's like I can't keep time and, and sing. <laughs> I'd let alone play a cajon and sing. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's May eleventh, twenty first in Germantown, fourteen eighty one South Shelby Street, Louisville, Kentucky. And it's like the big. It's getting to be the one of the better venues, man. It's 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 hopping up there. Twenty first is, and you don't want to. It's a Thursday night. It's done. It's done by ten o'clock, so it's early, and you guys come out and check it out. And there'll probably be a guest on my show. Uh, Carson has been already, but he might be again before, before between now and now on the show. You just might. We'll see. I'm gonna bring my guest right on. Tell us who you are. Where you're from? Hey, I'm Donnie. I'm with D O N. I actually founded the band about three years ago. Um, I am in the North Tampa Bay area in a small town called Spring Hill. Um, you may have heard of it because John Oliva from Sabotage lives in my area. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. So, th- yeah, this is a rocking area. I mean, I've got the lead singer to Queensryche and the drummer to Queensryche about an hour south of me. So, uh, you know, the Florida, Tampa Bay area for Florida has got uh, is the place to be for rock. You know, uh, Brian Johnson's also down here. Oh, is he? Yeah, Sarasota area. So yeah, oh. there's there's a ton ton of stars down here. A ton of yeah, a lot of people don't even know. I used to work in Lakeland. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. You I probably should... half for me. I know, man. I probably shouldn't say that publicly. No, I'm just kidding. I, no, that's I did, cool. I I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was it was a decent area. It was like yeah, I did was... a show in Bartow. No, no about, about a month ago. What was that? I did a show down in Bartow, which right next to Lakeland. Right, right. About a month ago. Oh, this this was. It's been a little while. I was there for six or seven months working, but I still I still have my apartment here. But <laughs> but I was down there working the whole time. <laughs> Call you a snowbird? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't always tell people I was from from you know northern kentucky or southern indiana <laughs> it's like you're a you're a yankee that's what that's what i was gonna say hey i'm originally from ohio so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but, yeah, you got a video coming out uh oh, yeah it is out it is out i'm sorry it's got like a thousand something views what am i uh, i'm screwy <laughs> for you're second good. year Second year, yeah, yeah. It came out, uh, well, the album came out last year in March. Um, it's my second album. Uh, first album was Trial and Error. And uh, so the, the new album, Second Gear, is, uh, 
is doing pretty well, actually. Um, you know, I've got over 14,000 views now on, or if you, I don't know, I guess on Spotify and, uh, and I got 500 you know, fans on Spotify. So yeah, it's doing pretty well. The videos on YouTube and wherever else they put it, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's pretty high, high powered, high octane. It's good stuff. If you like, uh, Joe Satriani style music. Yeah. I was going to do, are you, I, I thought you may have played all the instruments, but no, you've got a full band back in you. Um, actually, when I made the album, I didn't have a band yet. So the guy that uh, runs the studio at Dream Lab, where I record here in the Tampa Bay area, he, it, he, with the exception of the guitars, he did all the other instruments. Really? Yeah. His name's Mike Chomsky. Really great guy, man. Chomsky. Like Noam Chomsky? No, Chomsky. Oh, Chauncey. <laughs> Chauncey. Yeah, Mike Chauncey. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. I'd probably hire him for the band, except for he's also a, a pastor at a church. So, you know, that's that's his passion. So, um, but yeah, again, he's a great guy. He's helped me out quite a bit. And, uh, you know, so he, you know, he's the engineer uh, behind the music. And, you know, he did the mixing and the mastering and all that good stuff. And, um, you know, I just I just recorded, you know, I just played. <laughs> But you, but you wrote everything. I did write all the music. Um, it's it's one hundred percent all me. Um, like I said, with the exception of like the the drums and the bass guitar, which you know Mike threw in, threw in his little um, his you know little things in there and everything. And I said, hey, go for it. You know, if it sounded good, uh, I was in for it. So uh, yeah, but uh, you know, I I did one song at a time, which is what I normally do. I'll write a song go record it, you know, a month later, I'll have the next song and I'll go record it. So I'm already working my third album now. Yeah. That's how it goes though, man. Is like, You get one album, you finally get an album out. It's like, you almost got another one in the bag when you... <laughs> you really, that is so true. I mean, you really got it 100%. As soon as I released the first album, I was already writing for the second one. Yeah. And We've been planning on it, but there it is. <laughs> You're work, working with Pavement, which is, that's a big deal. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm partnered with them. Um, so they're doing my comp my campaign and all that good stuff. And they're, you know, they're definitely helped me out. Um, as soon as I get a, another guitarist and, and get everything going, then I'm planning on doing a few tours. Uh, Pavement's already sending me offers, but as soon as I get that other guitarist and get him polished up and get it, get it right, then, uh, yeah, planning on hitting the road a little bit. Where have you played so far? Uh, Bartow <laughs> and just some local areas, local stuff. I did a few, um, one of those open jam things uh, locally here in my area and where I played my own music, of course. You know, the the uh, the other band, they kind of picked it up. Um, you know, the guys, you know, it's kind of like guitar yoke, if you will. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, I played a couple of my own songs and I played don't a, a instrumental version of don't stop believing by journey and, you know, just have fun with it. You know? Now, show, let's get a close up of the guitar there. I want everybody to see this. This is a Jackson Randy Rhodes. Uh, I customized it. I don't know if you can, how, how much of this you can see there. Um, it's a good looking guitar. I, changed out. I got Seymour Duncan uh, black winners on this one. And then I'm going to see if I can bring this real close to the camera. If you look at the the truss rod cover, it's got my logo on it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. So I had, yeah, I customized it. Um, you know, it's it's a great guitar. Um, I, I love the sound. I love the feel of it. Um, that's and I have another one very similar to this, except for it's not two tone wood finish. Like this has got a darker tone on top of a, a lighter tone. The other one's just solid, and it's just more. And I use and I. Customize it a little bit too. I, I changed out the pickups. I put um, Seymour Duncan's uh, Invader pickups, and then I and then all the hardware, like the tuners and everything, is all black. So I got a gold, and then I got a black. So um, so that that's you know a lot of fun. And then I have an acoustic uh, Ibanez Talman that I use for my acoustic songs, and I got a couple couple of those on. Well, you know, if you listen to the new album. I got a number one. Well, I had. I don't know if it's still number one or not in Japan. Songs oh. called Trinity, 
And I also have a video for that on YouTube as well. Yeah. Oh, that's on my list of questions there was Trinity was. <laughs> yeah. Well, go ahead. Tell us about Trinity. Well, Trinity was, um, it's an acoustic mellow tune. It's, uh, I think I recorded on three channels, uh, all acoustic. Um, you know, of course, there's a little bit of drums and a little keyboard behind it for or a synthesizer, if you will, just to give it some flavor. Um, it was originally written for my ex-girlfriend, and um, but since things didn't work out, I mean, I still have the song. I wasn't gonna just you know toss you know toss the song. So it's just it's just a, a song called Trinity, and it's and it's it's a really nice song. I mean, I don't know if you get a chance to hear it or not, but uh, you should oh, yeah. definitely check it out. You should definitely check that one out. Yeah, that, I, I always pick two or three songs to talk about because those because those are the ones that I that the since it's my show, I get to talk about the songs that I like. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, so Second Gear and Trinity's off the album Second Gear, and then what's your third song that you like? Momentum. Momentum. That's the first song on Second Gear, and that one the the influence. You're gonna laugh. The influence of that song, if you listen to it real carefully, you hear. A little bit of white snakes crying in the rain in there. <laughs> that was the influence for that song. Well, that's a great song. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, it's just in a different key. Um, I, I use drop D for that song. The beginning of the song, you'll hear it. Uh, you know, a lot of people think it's a drum, but it's actually a bass guitar with a flanger on it. So mm -hmm. that very opening part um, where you hear... Um, it almost sounds like a drum, but it's a bass guitar with a flanger on it. I use that. <laughs> little, little secret there. You know, a lot of people are like, ooh, that's that's different. What is that? You know? So I I, I use a flanger on my bass sometimes. I'm Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bass my bass guitarist has that as well. He also uses chorus. Um, kind of gives mm -hmm. it a, a different tone, if you will. But uh so yeah, it's kind of cool. So we use that on the uh, Terminator. Off the first album, we did a uh, cover tune. It's the only cover tune I did was for the Terminator soundtrack, and I did oh, like yeah. a rock heavy metal version to it, <laughs> like the Terminator movie. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the theme. So yeah. that show I played in Bartow, I actually opened with that song, and the crowd went nuts for it. I mean, they were like, they because it starts out with that keyboard and. You know, just kind of, you don't know what it is. And all of a sudden you hear that, chun, 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 chun. it's like, whoa, what is that? you know, so a lot of people are like, that is not. And all of a sudden I kick in with the song and they're like, oh my gosh, man, that was amazing. So. What about, man, I cannot read my writing. Lullaby <laughs> for children. The lullaby for children never born. Um, that is kind of like a tribute to all the, um, you know, it's uh, if you want to call it an anti-abortion song, fine. Um, but it's just basically for kids that never got a chance at life, you know. So it's kind of a kind of thing like that. Yeah, that's that's it's really freaking good. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent song. Long Road Home. That's a really good song, too. If you like it's more of a, a song that you like drive your cargo cruise into. That's kind of what that is. What what would you say your favorite song to play live is right now? Oh gosh, um, well of course Second Gear I think is pretty. But off the first album, I have a song called Losing Control, and it's kind of kind of like hard, if you will, almost like a, a heavy heavy metal. It's not a fast. It's not like a thrash song or anything. It's just very hard, and um, and and I think that's probably my my second favorite song to play live. Well, we were talking before the show about Celt Celtic, Celtic Star. Star. Yeah, tell, tell yeah. us behind that. And I'll, oh, I'll admit, I, I always thought that this was a rumor. I didn't know it was it was actually true. So true. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, well all the here. details. Okay. Well, Celtic Star is the very first song I ever wrote. Okay, written or whatever you want to call it. Um, so. It was, it took a long time since it was my first thing and I'd never written anything before. So it actually took almost six months totally to, to get it 
the, the where it is now, where, where you'll hear if you listen to the album. Now, the song is a dedication to uh, the girl that played in the original Poltergeist movies, Heather O'Rourke. And the reason why, and first of all, let me go back. I'm friends with her uncle and her sister. So, um, so the song was a dedication for her. Um, I just thought it was a nice gesture. Her family reached out and it was a nice gesture. Yeah. And uh, her family actually sent me the pictures that I used for the video of that, um, of that song. And, uh, okay. Now here's your rumor. What, what you thought was a rumor. She back in eighty seven, late eighty seven, she uh she went to the doctor, she wasn't feeling good. Everybody thought she had the flu. She goes to see the doctor and then he tried to say she had Crohn's disease. So they give her medication, send her on her way. And then what happens in um February first of nineteen eighty eight, she passed on and when they got her to the hospital they found out she had an intestinal blockage, which could have been you know, fixed with, with a surgery if the doctors caught that the first time. So what happened is her intestines burst and she died of what is that called? Sepsis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, intestinal stenosis, whatever you want to call it. So that's what happened. So that's, you know, and uh, so, yeah, so all these rumors that, oh, she's still alive. No, she ain't alive, unfortunately. Right. Um, and, and all this other stuff, you know, it was a doctor's mistake. So that's, that's the truth of it. It's it sucks being human. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah, she was a, uh, you know, my understanding, she was a really, really great little kid. So, so you know, naturally, I wanted to do something for the family, and like I said, I sent some friends with her sister and her uncle. So, so I wrote that, and they loved it. And then I, I think her sister sent it to Heather's mom, and of course, you know, she loved it. So. So I, I think I did something there. It is awesome. I did yeah. check that out. And I was like, there's, I knew there was a story. I was like, what is, I couldn't figure out what, I couldn't put put it together. But well, a little interesting fact, Poltergeist is the first movie that ever scared me. And I, <laughs> I watched horror flicks all the time as a little kid. Now, I was like maybe 10 years old when it came out. And oh, wow. I watched it at a church lock-in. <laughs> <laughs> Now, churches, are, churches are scary at night anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they're playing poltergeist at church. You know? <laughs> they sure did, man. We, we watched it, and and that little kid's name was Robbie. Yeah. yeah. Went by at the time. <laughs> yeah, Oliver Robbins. Yeah, I got to meet him, actually. He came to Florida at one of the Comic-Cons here a couple oh, years wow. back. I got to meet him. He's a nice guy. He's really a nice guy. Oh, man. But I also had a tree outside my window at my house. <laughs> <laughs> that movie, I, that movie terrified me for a long time. <laughs> Were you afraid it was going to eat you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Th that tree had knots on it. I can't, It was a. It was some kind of a pine, and it had knots on it. And, it. and way before I ever saw the movie, every time it cast a shadow, it looked like a face sticking out of the tree, which never bothered me until I saw Poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> and that <never> bothered you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a for its time. It's a classic horror movie, uh, even though it only had a PG rating. But still, I think for what it was of its time, yeah, because uh, it came out in '82. Yeah. So um, you know, so I I thought it was like one of the one of the better horror movies of its time. You know, I think it rated up with Halloween. Oh yeah. Yeah, Halloween didn't even scare me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like I, I, I love, love it. Love, I've, got, I've got all of them on Blu-ray. So <laughs> I love, I still love horror flicks, and I, I love them ever since I was a little kid. I, I was, I was living in Indianapolis, and there was a, a horror movie host on Friday nights at midnight or something like that, named Sammy Terry, and I would always watch Sammy Terry, which is play on the word cemetery, but right. You know, he was kind of a, a Sven Gulli or a, yeah, I love Sven Gulli. I watch him all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but Poltergeist scared me. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was a, uh, it was a, uh, yeah, it's a pretty wild film. And hopefully, uh, some of your viewers here, they've seen it. I mean, some of the older ones probably have, but if if you're one of the younger viewers, man, definitely check that movie out. I mean, you know, for its time, it's pretty pretty wild film. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. we are so. starting to run out of time here. All Let's right. Give me um, anything you'd like to add in before we wrap it up. 
Yeah, okay. Well, first of all, if you want to check out where you can see myself, well, naturally, I have um, a website. It's uh, d-o-n dot here now. That's H-E-A-R-N-O-W, here now dot com. And that's got all the links to Spotify. Uh, I got an Etsy store. You can buy the CDs or they're also available on Amazon. Um, you can check out, um, you know, the videos uh, for YouTube. Um, so, you know, definitely check it out. Uh, it's good, good music. If you like instrumental guitar rock, similar to Joe Satriani and David Gilmore, hey, you're gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, you will. It is really great. It's, and there will be links in the in the description to all to all his information there. If you like this video or like my sh like this show, pl please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the little bell. I want to thank you so much for being my guest tonight. Hey, and, thanks for having me. And I'm your host, Rob Lyon, signing off.